Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to the Artists in the Library information session. My name is Tamaj Garad. I'm the Outreach and Access Program Manager at TAC. I'm going to be um, starting off this session um, with you. And Erica, if you can just share the screen, we'll do an access acknowledgement before we get started. Awesome, thank you. So um, we're joined by our ASL interpreters. Um, you can find them to the right of the screen for the duration of the session. You can pin both interpreters and the Q&A portion will not be recorded for this session. We will have a Q&A after our presentation. If you'd like to ask a question in ASL or be seen on video for the Q&A, please message myself. Again, my name is Tamaj and I'll let you uh, turn your video on. I'll enable your video. To turn on closed captioning, select the CC icon to the bottom right of your screen. You can enlarge any side of the screen by moving the split screen bar in the middle of the screen in the direction of the side of the screen you would like minimized. The chat box is available if you have a comment and the Q&A box is available if you have a question. I'll be checking both to um, monitor your questions as we as we progress in the presentation. But again, there will be some time for you to also ask questions at the end. During discussion, you can raise your hand and your mic will be turned on if you would like to speak. So I also want to um, share a land acknowledgement with you. As we gather today, we want to acknowledge the diversity of the first peoples of this area and recognize the territories of the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Mississauga of the Credit First Nation. Today, Toronto is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island and around the world, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to work to live and to meet on this territory. So as I mentioned, um, my name is Tamaj Grad and I um, work as a program manager in the Black Arts program. I'm also joined by Erica Henbury, which who will be actually providing most of the uh, facilitation for of this info session today. Um, but I did want to start by sort of introducing the Black Arts program to you. It is a new program at Toronto Arts Council. Um, and this program, we have a uh, projects grant as well as an operating grant. I'm gonna share a little bit about the projects grant. So this program is open to black artists and collectives. And the first aspect of the black arts project, we have two different kind of categories is creation and development. So creation and development supports full creation, partial creation, or a completion of a work in progress arts based project. So this is for any arts discipline um, for an artist at any stage in their project. So it's really very open um, and can accommodate, you know, the beginning phases or you know, just a, a partial completion or a full completion of a project. It's open to individual Black artists and artist collectives um, that are Black-led. We also have a presentation grant that supports exhibition, presentation, and dissemination of work by Black artists in any arts discipline. And yes, this is only for Black artists. So I am presenting this as a new program at TAC. It is only for Black identified artists. Um, so if that um, is you or somebody that you know, please do share this information. Um, there will be a way to contact uh, myself, the program manager, at the end. And we will actually be having some additional supports within this program. And these are um, created to specifically address some barriers that Black artists in the city have been experiencing in terms of um, things like professional development, access to space, access to um, certain opportunities. And this program as a whole was created collaboratively with the Black arts community to respond to some of those barriers in a way that is ongoing and, and provides supports that are needed um, and very specific to the unique 
needs of Black artists in the city. So some of those additional supports are mentorship. So there will be an option to select mentorship within your application. Um, there's also, and this is something that will be available for, for 2022 applicants, uh, co-creation lab called Black Future Studio that we'll be um, providing in partnership with um, an arts organization. And this is a multidisciplinary lab, co-creation lab, where artists can meet and network and collaborate. We'll also be providing some arts career development workshops, and these are kind of drop in style workshops that are focused on growing and establishing arts-based practice. So these additional supports are available to project the Black Arts Project grant recipients. And again, this has been envisioned in collaboration with community to sort of meet artists where they are um, and bridge some of the gaps that exist. We also are going to be um, providing an operating grant opportunity so we have um, annual operating funding that um, will be available to Black arts organizations that are Black-led, Black-focused, and Black-serving. So this means that you would need to um, have most of the leadership within your organization be Black-identified. Um, you would also um, be required to predominantly, but not exclusively, serve the Black community and have a focus on um, providing arts uh, activities to the Black community. So this funding in, uh, pr program is intended to support the development and flourishing of Black arts organizations within the city. So both programs currently have a deadline of October 7th. However, the Black Project, the Black Arts Projects program will be a rolling deadline from October 7th onward. So you'll have the opportunity to apply to the projects program on more of an ongoing basis throughout the year. So if you want more information about this program, you can contact me, uh, Tamaj Grad. I'm the program manager and my information is on the screen. Feel free to take a screenshot or write down my information and get in touch. I'm happy to discuss any project ideas that you have. Um, if you're a Black arts organization, I'm happy to discuss the annual operating program with you. And yeah, this is a really exciting program for us at TAC. It's brand new and this is our first sort of time doing it, but it will be an ongoing fixed program within TAC. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have and have a conversation about it. So that's it for me. Um, next, I'm gonna be uh, joined by Erica um, Hennenberry, who is the program manager for Artists in the Library. Um, and she's joined by Elizabeth Malik, who's the area manager for the Toronto Public Library. So I'll hand it over to you two to uh, facilitate the rest of the session. Thanks, Tamaj. Um, hi, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being here with us today. Um, and thanks for being interested in the artist in the library program. Um, it's one of my favorite programs. It's pretty new still. It's only been around since about 2014. So we always say we're sort of, you know, in permanent pilot mode. Um, and those of you who are familiar with the program may notice that it has changed and shifted over the over the years. Um, and uh, so we'd like to get a lot of feedback from artists who have participated in the program, really carefully read those final reports, take them really into consideration, talk to our, our partners at the library uh, and make changes each year. So it's really important for that reason to read the program guidelines, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, because it'll outline um, how you apply for the program and what it is we're looking for. So, um, the, oh wow, this deadline is uh, really not true. I'm so sorry. Please ignore that slide. That's that's a slide from last year. The program deadline is September 15th. It's not November. September 15th um, for the Artists in the Library program. And it is uh, an artist residency program. That's important to know. Um, in previous years, the program was a bit larger and a little bit more intensive with a grant amount of $20,000. Uh, and a much longer, deeper, more involved residency period. But of course, because of COVID, we have made some changes. Um, we've decided for the current period of time to just offer a bit of a smaller residency program. So it's a bit of a lighter touch 
um, to the extent you will be uh, doing on-site programming, it will be a much smaller um, component. So um, what does this program support? Well, uh, this program, this grants program, supports community-engaged artist residencies um, at 11 of a certain specific branches at Toronto Public Library, and, and I'll list those branches in a moment, but they can also be found in the grant guidelines. Um, and you'll notice in the grant guidelines, uh, if you scroll down to the end, there's an appendix that describes each of the library branches a little bit, gives you a little bit of contextual information, um, information on the, the communities that these branches are situated in. So it's helpful if you're not sure which branches you might be interested in, just to have a look at that appendix. Um, so uh, the grant amount is $10,000. Um, and uh, the artists who will be in residence there at each of the branches um, will be able to explore their own art practice, will be able to deliver free public arts programming to, um, to the local community, to the library customers, and to also communities that you may want to bring into the branch to experience the work. Um, the work could be performance, uh, visual media arts, installation, exhibition, uh, workshops, artist talks, open studio sessions, arts education programs, mentorship opportunities, or other public arts activities. It's really, really wide open. Whatever it is you can imagine, you can do. So um, it's a very flexible, open program. Uh, and artists coming from any arts discipline are welcome to apply to this program. So here are the eligible branches. Um, we have branches that are in Scarborough, Etobicoke, and North York. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about why that is, and then I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth to talk about the libraries, um, the Toronto Public Libraries partnership with us and sort of what it is you need to know about uh, TPL and these branches when you're thinking about creating application. Um, so this Artists in the Library program is part of Toronto Arts Council's strategic initiative programs. Um, and those are really designed to specifically invest arts programming and invest in artists who are not working in the downtown core of the city that's that's been very very well invested in what we're looking at is just really carefully intentionally um creating opportunities for artists who are working outside of the downtown so that's why these branches have been selected um, this year so i'm going to hand it over to elizabeth to tell you a little bit about um tpl and and what you should think about Hi there, thank you, Erica. Um, my name is Elizabeth Malik, and as Tamaj already indicated, I'm an area manager with Toronto Public Library. Um, my branches are in the northwest end of the city, but um, part of my role here at Toronto Public Library is to um, provide system level support um, for the artist in the library program. Um, I have a colleague. Justine Garrar, who's uh, fortunately for her on vacation this week. She's the manager for adult programming at TPL and she works with me on the artist in the library program. So as you move through your process of, of developing your application and you know when you're successful and, and you're, you're beginning to plan your program with us, uh, both myself and Justine will be um, supports to you um, throughout throughout the whole process from the TPL aspect we're so we're, we're we can be contacted with any questions um, or if you want information about the various branches for which uh, you're thinking about uh, developing a program for um, we can be that initial resource um, so I want to talk a little bit about the branches um, themselves uh, as you can see on the deck, we've got 11 branches for the coming year and, you know, they're all over the city and they're also, you know, di different types of branches. Um, I don't know whether in your visits to TPL branches, you've noticed that we've have got some large branches and we've got some smaller branches. Um, and, you know, this really, the size of the branch really informs the opportunities uh, for programming. So I, I just want to sort of give a bit of a sense of what each branch um, for next year will be like. 
Um, Aging Court in uh, the northeast end of the city um, is a large district branch. Um, so this is a multi-level branch. We've got a number of program rooms there. We've got, um, you know, if you're interested in working with youth or teens, we've got um, a huge uh, teen um, space there and, and programs um, that connect to teens. Uh, we've got a learning center. Um, so if there's any interest in doing programming that has a digital component, you know, that's a resource there to you. Um, so something so that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about aging court. Um, Albion, which is in the northwest end of the city, um, is also a large district branch, and we've got multiple programming spaces there. We've also got um, really good space for outdoor programming. So if that's something that is of interest to you, Albion might be a, a good location. We also have a digital innovation hub, so that's enhanced digital technologies there um, available to you. So I'm thinking, you know, thinking about 3D printing or if there's, you know, any advanced sort of software that you want to have access to, um, you know, Albion may be a location you you'd want to think about. Albert Campbell, um, which is in more of the southeast end of the city, um, is actually going through a renovation right now and they'll be ready um, for your program. Um, you know, when they reopen. But again, I imagine they'll have some new spaces there to do programs. They are a larger, a larger district branch. Um, so it'll be an opportunity to celebrate the new Albert Campbell and then and make use of the new program spaces. Cedar Bray is also in the East End. Um, and they are a district branch. We've also got a very strong teen presence there. We offer youth hub service. They've got their own um, teen zone space. Um, they also have a learning center. Um, Downsview, um, which is in North York, also has a learning center, a digital innovation hub, and a really strong uh, youth hub program. Fairview, also in North York, further north in North York, um, really large multi-level branch, um, also huge components for, for learning in the learning center and, and digital innovation. Um, we also have a theater there. So if your program has a performance aspect to it, or if you want to have a performance space, you may want to think about Fairview. Rishuka, which is more midtown, um, is also a district branch, lots of programming space. Um, we also have a learning center here. I say here because this is where I am today. I'm at Rayshuka. Um, and again, strong um, teen presence. New Toronto, which is along Lakeshore and Etobicoke, is a smaller branch. Um, so it'll be a really intimate space there. You could be doing things on the floor. Um, but uh you know that you know which you know presents a you know different way to do your to do your program but um you know really you know lively community there and lots of opportunities um you know to use outdoor space there as well oakwood which actually is not too far from Riyashuka, but you know is a community of its own is also a, a vibrant neighborhood it's Slightly larger than New Toronto, but not quite as big as, as Maria Shuka. Um, they have a, a large auditorium in their basement, which is fantastic for programming. Um, and we've had a lot of success with different types of arts programming there, ranging um, from performance to spoken work to uh, literary type programs. So, it, you know, it is a great space um, to do that type of programming. Uh, Richview, which is in the West End, is a district branch as well, multi-floor building. Again, lots of uh, access to digital innovation if, if that's of interest to you and um, lots of programming space if you want to uh, um, engage in uh, a lot of hands-on programming. And then York Woods is also a branch under renovation, um, but will be opening either later this fall or early in the new year. Um, completely reconfigured space, but lots of programming, new programming space in there. 
um, similar to what I've said with the other district branches, we're going to have a learning center in there. We're going to have a digital inv innovation hub. And that site also has a theater. So that would be of interest to anyone who wants to have a space, again, you know, to work through performances or deliver performances or engage in that way. So that sort of gives you a sense of those spaces. Um, in the application package, uh, you know, there is a summary of the kinds of things that the branches are looking for in terms of arts, um, arts programming. So, you know, do take a look and see if what you, if your vision aligns with what um, the branch was uh, trying to hone in on. Um, but that said, you know, there is a lot of opportunity, um, you know, as you develop your application to connect with the branches, you can do, do that by connecting with me and, and we can set up a connection with the location. Um, so you can learn more about the branch and the community and, and what um, the branch thinks is, you know, of interest to the community. Um, and then as you move forward in the program, um, myself and Justine will also, you know, facilitate connections with branch contacts. So we will um, establish a connection to someone in the branch who will help you um, through the whole sort of program development and implementation process. They'll be your, your, your lead contact um, and, and, you know, answer day-to-day -to -day questions. But Justine and I will always be there um, to help support and, and you know, work, uh, work through your program plans as well. So you, you'll have lots of support on the library side um, as you develop and, and deliver your program. And I think that's it for me. So I'm gonna pass things back to Erica. Um, artists that actively practice their work um, and artists that are seeking payment for their work. Um, seeking, seeking payment doesn't necessarily mean that you have received payment in the past, you may not have, but that you intend to and you wish to receive payment for your work and that you're attempting to do so, that, that's an important distinction. Um, and then you have uh, some kind of a history of having presented your work in public before. Um, so if you're not sure, just reach out and uh, I can help you uh, figure out whether or not you know you feel like you could define yourself as a professional artist but it's pretty generous definition so uh okay i want to go over eligibility just a little bit because we do get quite a lot of questions about um eligibility because tac has so many different types of grants programs um and they do have limitations on how many applications you can have for the various different programs and so i want to sort of lay this out for you a little bit we have three different kind of categories of funding. Um, one would be the long-standing programs that we have at TAC that we've had for a long time. So these are arts discipline programs. These are all the categories of artistic creation like dance, theater, visual media arts, um, music, uh, these kind of categories. And for a long time TAC has offered operating grants and project grants in all of these arts categories. So arts discipline funding is the first category. You can have one arts discipline, arts discipline grant uh, per calendar year. Um, strategic funding, that is this program. This is a strategic funding program um, that, that also uh, would include animating historic sites, animating Toronto parks, and our art, re art reach program. So, um, you can also have one of these grants um, per calendar year. So if I were, um, say, I were uh, an individual dance artist, I could have, um, I could have a, a grant uh, in an arts discipline grant, a project grant in the dance program, and I could also have an artist in the library uh, grant to do an artist in the library project. So you can have one from each of these categories. And then we have this kind of other category for lack of a better word, um, and that includes pro uh, programs like Open Door, the Newcomer and Refugee Artist Mentorship. Um, so you can also um, apply to these programs. At the same time as these other programs, you could potentially have you know, an arts discipline grant, a strategic programs grant, and uh, like an Open Door grant, or you could be a mentor in the Newcomer program. So. That's some sort of ways to slice and dice the different opportunities that TAC has. If you're not sure, just let me know. It is important to know, though, if you do receive, have received in the past a strategic funding grant uh, and you have not yet um, 
submitted your final report, you would not be eligible. So you do need to complete the program and, and, and uh, submit that final report to be eligible to receive another grant. So um, that's pretty much that. And I want to just say a little note about final reports, because I think it's something that people can find really intimidating um, and kind of a drag to do. But um, final reports are, are really important for TAC. They give us a lot of really good information on how you experienced uh, the project that you that you that you did that was funded by TAC. And, and especially for these strategic programs, it's such good information for us to know how it went for you. Um, how did you succeed? How did you fail? What mistakes did you make? What did you learn? Um, all the things you tried, you know, how it, how it affected you. Um, any suggestions you have for how to make the program better? Um, we love hearing all of these things. And I want you to know that when you're writing your final report, um, I'm going to be the one that's reading it. It, it. It's not something that we ever will show to the grant review panel. It's something that uh, we program managers use to um, to get information. So if you have an outstanding final report, like don't be scared. Just get get into it and be honest, and um, you can speak really freely about uh, what you experienced. And just submit it and get it cleared, and then you can apply for more grants. Uh, and if you need any support doing that, you can always reach out to us. We're always really happy to help. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the assessment process, um, just to kind of demystify it a little bit. And also, I think it helps you sort of figure out what it is you need to write. So um, um, the grants at TAC are all awarded on a, com a relative competitive basis. Um, they're all awarded by a grant review panel. So my role as a program manager is not at all to um, decide who gets funding and who doesn't get funding. It, my job is just to support you and um, make sure that you have the information that you need to put the best application you can together. So. Um, it's it's my job to support you, and I and I like to do that. So please please reach out to me, but also to let you know that the process is really uh, is not influenced by the program managers. We facilitate the process, but we we don't uh, you know we won't say which projects we think are good or whatever. We'll just um, facilitate the conversation of the panelists who are going to be making those decisions. We'll also, for this program, um, have representative from Toronto Public Library to read the applications and to give us feedback on, you know, um, logistics and feasibility and a kind of a suitability of the projects for the particular branch that they're wanting to work in. Um, so the, the, the criteria, the assessment criteria that the panelists will be using um, to assess the applications will be artistic merit of the proposed project, uh, suitability of the project for the particular branch uh, or the community that will be experiencing the work, the quality of the proposed project and, and how the participants and the branch customers will experience uh, that, that work, what kind of experience they'll have, um, the ability of the applicant to carry out the project as you've written it. So it's just, you know, really demonstrating that you have the capacity to undertake a project like this. And part of the way you do that is by showing support materials from your previous work. Uh, and then also the financial viability of the project. And, and the way that you demonstrate the viability of the project is by just writing a really clear, simple budget. So um, I want to talk a little bit about access, um, TAC's access support. So we have um, TAC Accessibility Grants, um, and that is an additional grant amount of up to $5,000 that you can apply for um, ab above and beyond that $10,000 project fund. So you're going to get your grant, you're going to get your $10,000, and you have up to $5,000 that you can apply for. And this is only for eligible uh, for um, costs associated with uh, project participants, so artists that you're working with, who are deaf or artists with disabilities. So this is uh, really access expenses that this grant is to cover. So uh, accessibility costs um, could be things like ASL interpretation, um, audio description, closed captioning, um, communications assistance uh, or attendance, um, and there may be things that you, you require that are not listed here, and that's fine. If you're not sure, we can talk about it. 
Um, so you will just, you know, if you are an artist with a disability, if you're deaf, uh, or if you're working with deaf, mad disabled artists, you can fill out this section of the grant. Um, this is not for um, audience members or project part like uh, project participants, like the community who's um, experiencing the work. This is for the artists who are creating the work. So we also have uh, application access support. So this is for grant applicants who are deaf uh, or, or have a disability and need some support to either complete your application or to complete a final report. And this is a grant, uh, this is sort of an amount, an out, a year by year maximum amount of $500 that you can apply to. Um, and the way it works is that you would hire a service provider to come and give you that support. And uh, the service provider would bill TAC for their labor expenses. So that's how that program works. Um, and if that's something you wanna access, uh, just let me know and then and, and I'll set it up for you. Um, it's really easy. It's, it's not a big deal. There's no hoops to jump through. Um, it says six weeks before the grant deadline, but it's fine. You can just call me anytime and we'll figure it out. Um, application overview. I wanted to just go over the different sections of the actual grant application and talk about kind of what, why those sections are there and help you think through a little bit what you might need to include. So there's sort of eight sections of the grant application itself. And the first section is the voluntary self ID. This is just a form. Um, this is a confidential form that you fill out. Uh, you don't have to fill it out, but it's very helpful to us if you can. And this form uh, is where you can indicate um, your, whether you are part of um, you know, one or more of uh, Toronto Arts Council's equity priority groups. Um, this just helps us with our research to find out who is getting funding and what kinds of, like, like what what are we missing? How how do how are we meeting our equity goals? Because that's really important to us. So that's just a simple form. Just click through, um, and that won't be seen by the grant review panel. It'll just be seen by program managers. So um, the applicant ID is the next section. So if you're an organization, you would fill out the organization ID. That's where you put your organization history, you upload um, your list of your board members, things like that. It's a pretty straightforward section. The third section is project details. Um, so this is sort of like a snapshot of what it is you're gonna do. So which branches do you wanna work in? Um, what are the dates of the project? And this is where you include a, just a little project summary. And this is just a very concise, like pithy little summary. Like this is your elevator pitch. Um, and it's really helpful to have this be just really clear and concise because it's the thing that um, the, the grant review panels will see first. And it's also a really nice uh, opportunity to just like let them remember what your application is um, at a glance, right? Uh, and so this is also the part of the grant where you will include all of the information, including CVs and bios. So it's both CVs and bios, not one or the other, um, for all the project contributors. So all of the artists that you're working with on this project. So you will upload all the CVs and bios here and you'll fill out this little uh, field that just says what the roles of all the project participants are. Um, and it's really important that you only include project participants that have confirmed that they are, you know, that you have their consent to put their names forward in this application. If you haven't spoken to them and you don't have their consent, don't include them in the application. So the next section, and this is really the meat of the grant, like this is the main section of the grant, and this is the part that's going to take the most amount of work and thinking and polishing. So this is the section of the grant where where you're gonna um, where you're gonna um, include your project overview, uh, artistic goals and objectives, your outreach and audience development plan, your work plan, and your access plan. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what each of those things are. So your overview. This is really where you're describing the project. What is the project, and how are you gonna do it? That's really what you're talking about there. Um, it's only 500 words. It's actually not super long project description, but um, 
that gives you a sense of how much or how little you need to write. So you know, for instance, if you've written just a couple of sentences or maybe a paragraph, you haven't written enough. And you know that if you've reached the maximum word count and you still haven't really talked about the project yet, you're going into too much level of detail. So use that word, use the word count of each of these fields to guide how much or how little you want to write. So the project overview is just a description of your residency that you're going to do. Uh, and the next piece is artistic goals and objectives. And this is really a time for you to kind of like situate yourself, your own practice in the field that you're working in. So if I'm like a dance artist is where I talk about what form I'm working in and, and how, how I'd like to explore it and how I'd like to, you know, learn as an artist and what I'm hoping to accomplish artistically as part of this residency. Um, so the next section of the project description is the outreach and audience development part. And this is just very straightforward. It's just how will you reach the, the community that you want to bring in to participate in your project? Uh, what kind of partnerships might you be able to set up to enable you to reach the local community or to reach out to those communities that um, you really want to reach to bring into the branch if they're not already there? Don't rely on the local customers coming and going to be your project participants or your audience because they uh, will need, they really need an incentive to be invited in. Um, and so, I, I, there's been some really amazing ways that people have done that, and I want and I want to give like some different examples of how you can do that. Um, there's uh, Joy Laps Lewis, this really amazing um, uh, percussionist. What she would do is give some concerts leading up to the beginning of her residency, so that when people were coming and going, they would hear this beautiful steel pan drumming hope happening over in the program room, and they would just kind of pop their head in and find out what's going on. And she had some folks there, like handing out flyers and saying, oh, okay, this program, this learning, you know, learning a steel pan program is starting next week, so here's how to register. Uh, and that, you know, she really filled up her um, registration very quickly by doing that. Um, or, or I think yeah, the, the giving a concert thing is, is an example that I keep using because it works really well, like just to sort of give it a sense of what your art practice is and, um, and sort of entice people. And some people have done like participatory music making, um, uh, you know, deep listening, uh, instrument creation, dance intensives where you come and create a work and then you perform it at the end. Um, all kinds of different types of practices have come through. Um, there's a ceramicist who did a beautiful, um, a beautiful community engagement uh, initiative where he actually brought his pottery wheel out right into the main foyer of the branch. So as people were coming to pick up their books, um, you know, he would invite them over to come and like, you know, throw a pot or like whatever, he just or just to watch him do that was kind of a performance in and of itself. So there's all kinds of really interesting creative strategies that you can use. Um, anyway, all that to say, uh, you can get quite creative with your um, outreach and audience development plan, but a good thing to do is also to reach out to uh, local art service organizations in your, in your area or uh, local community groups that might be able to help you reach the reach the local reach local students, reach local seniors, reach whoever it is you're trying to get to uh, to get them to participate in your project. Okay, so the next section of the project description is your work plan. This is very simple. This is just a detailed project timeline. It can actually even just be in point form. It's totally fine to do that in point form. This just lays out all of the major steps uh, of your of your plan. Uh, and how you're going to pull it off. The access plan. Um, this is something um, that's fairly new for TAC, but but it's something that has been suggested that we add, and I think it's really important. Um, and this is really, you know, how will you accommodate access support for the participants or audience members who are experiencing your work? Um, just being really clear and being ready, being ready to ask people what their access needs are and being ready to support their access needs. And you can do that by creating a budget. So that's allocating a part of your, your budget 
of that ten thousand dollars allocating it that that will go to whatever supports folks need whether that's asl or whether that's attendant care or, or something that you haven't even thought of yet um, or whether that's just a way of being in the space that's sort of more accessible for folks uh, whether that's relaxed performances there's lots of different strategies that people can use so that's if you're not sure how to create an access plan there are lots of resources online um, that you can access to figure out how to do that and what kind of information you might want to include in that section um, but it's really important i mean you know if you're being funded by public money that has you have to make sure that your work is accessible to anyone who wants to access it um, okay and then so that's the project description section of the grant that's really the major part so if you get that done you're kind of ready to go um, now this next section is also very very important and it is uh, the support materials section so this is where you can upload uh, links or or digital files of uh, either images or video or audio or printed materials as well uh, that show the history of your work, especially uh, if you have a lot of work, if you're a very interdisciplinary artist, um, please think about selecting the work, um, samples of your work that are most relevant to the particular project that you're applying with for this program. So if you're somebody that's, you know, uh, skilled in many different art practices, but you're exploring only one of those in this particular residency, it's good to show as many of those as you can. But you can also show a range of your work, um, and that's, that's also helpful. Um, so there's lots of space to include images and video. Just be very selective about what it is you decide to show. Uh, okay, so the next section is the budget information. And there are sort of two pieces to this. The first is just a form that you type directly into. Um, you can um, add and, and sort of adjust some of the different columns on, on this form. Uh, there's a section for um, revenue and there's a, sec a section for expenses. So the revenue section may only be Toronto Arts Council grant $10,000. That's totally fine. You don't have to have any other revenue. You'll see this form is fairly generic. It's used across programs. So there will be revenue um, lines for things like tickets or you know workshop fees. You're not gonna have any of that for this because you don't charge tickets. All of the programming has to be free. So that's not relevant. Also, you're not charging workshop fees or anything like that. If you have some other funding, um, that you can include in this, that's that's totally fine. You can do that. Um, you can uh, scale up your project a little bit that way, but there's no requirement to do that. It's totally fine if 100% of the budget is just Toronto Arts Council. So that's the budget. Now there's a second piece to this budget information section of the grant, and that's supplementary budget notes. And that's just a, where, a, a place where you can upload um, detailed breakdown of the budget. So in the budget form, you're gonna type in basic expense, basic revenues and, and expense totals. So I'll say, maybe uh, maybe I have a type of a project where I don't really have any you know materials or equipment rental or anything like that. It's just artist fees. Uh, so I would say in my, um, in my revenue line, I would